Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and this is the 348th Rome Total War Brotherhood game that I've put onto YouTube. As most of you know, I tend to just put a battle on on a Saturday morning, as this is a family computer and there's usually always somebody on it. But I come home from work today, and uh, amazingly, there was no one on the computer, so I decided to put a midweek bonus battle on. It's just a quick 2v2 battle that was fought between three to four years ago, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, our first teammate is uh, myself, Spartan Commander, who's bought the Rome SBQR faction. As I say, this battle was fought three to four years ago, and this is a different type of army from what I bring today. Uh, this was an experimental one, I think, with an Eagle unit in. It's got, uh, I think it's got 14 infantry and 6 cavalry. So that's that army, and my teammate is um, Greek's clan member, Cleomenes. Now, Cleomenes is one of the most senior uh, Greek clansmen. Um, and remember that the Greek clan's mission on Rome Total War was to become the best um, clan with spear and pike factions. And to this end, they practiced for hours and hours and hours. We used to see them in the lobby coming out of games and then hosting their, um, you know, uh, the clan game again. They're going back in again, over and over again. And they became, um, I think most people would agree, the best clan with pikes and spears. Especially Macedon, Greek cities, Seleucid. Those three factions seemed to be their favourite. And they were extremely good with them. And that's why when we fought this battle, as I said three to four years ago, I was surprised that Cleo um, bought Rome instead of one of his... Um, <clears throat> favourite pike faction. Let's have a close look at his army there. As you can see he's only got nine infantry there. So that's a small amount of infantry um, for the modern day battlefield. If you notice he's got an eagle unit and a general infantry unit as well there as well for extra morale. But the surprising part of his army I think you'll see is that um, <clears throat> he's actually got five archer units. Um, and if we have a look at the upgrades on those uh, five archer units I think you'll be quite surprised if you notice there, he's got eight upgrades, so that's two experience stripes, gold shield, gold attack on each one of those um, five archer units. So that makes those archers incredibly serious archers, and uh, there must be a reason for him to do that, and I think you'll see that in a moment when you see um, <clears throat> the other team. But as I say, he's got two experience stripe, gold shield, gold attack on all five of his archers there. So um, <clears throat> it'll be interesting to see how well he uses them. The Sailor, eight, eight upgrades on all of them there. So uh, they're going to be highly effective and efficient, those are archers as well, but only nine infantry. Let's have a look at his cavalry. The upgrades on his cavalry, seven upgrades. So he's got an experienced stripe, gold shield, gold attack on all of his cavalry there. So there's our team. Um, as I say, this battle was fought three to four years ago, but you wait till you see the people we're fighting. It's got a potential to be a great 2v2, and I hope you enjoy it. And here is the other team. We have COH Lucius C. Sulla. COH clan, I think that's the Crusaders of Hell. Um, they're an old clan. Uh, you don't see them much on RTW these days, but um, uh, I think um, Sulla was one of the leaders of the clan here. And he, as you can see, he's bought the Rome Julio faction. Um, I think he's got 11 uh, infantry there. And he's got three archer units and six cavalry. So have a quick look at the upgrades on his cavalry. Two, three, four. Right, he's got eight upgrades. So he's got two experience stripes, gold shield, gold attack on each one of his cavalry units. Now that you, we already know that Praetorian cavalry are really elite, tough cavalry. But you throw eight upgrades onto them as well, and that makes them extremely elite. So they're going to be difficult to beat. Um, his next teammate, his teammate is um, an RTW player who's called himself Hero, but I think if I remember right, that may well be Scorpion King SR. Um, I could be wrong there, but I think it is Scorpion King SR. And as you can see, he's bought the Pontus faction. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I think he's got eleven Pike units there. Remember the uh, their bronze um, <coughs> bronze shield spearman there, but. Uh, if you notice at the upgrades there, he's got six upgrades on his forward units, his pilot shield units there, so that's its uh, gold shield, gold attack. And then he's got eight upgrades on his rear battle lines there. So he's got two experienced stripes, gold shield, gold attack on his two rear battle lines there. That makes those um, pikemen extremely tough. So that's a pretty well balanced um, group of pikes there, I think. And then we move on to the um, Cappadocian Cavalry. This is the uh, the Pontus Heavy Cavalry, the Cappadocian Cavalry, and I see he's got eight upgrades on. There's a close-up of the cavalry there. For those of you who might not have seen the Cappadocian Cavalry, and as I say, he's got two experienced stripes, gold shield, gold attack on that cavalry. That makes him quite tough. 
be interesting to see how well they do during the course of the battle as he's got three archer units there to give his big 120 man units uh, archer cover and also he's got a scythed chariot a heavy scythed chariot there now if you look closely at this chariot you'll see that he's got three upgrades so my guess is that's probably attack no no not worth putting defense on and if you notice he got the side the wheels and spikes on the horses which make these very very vicious attacking uh, units but of course they have got the potential to run amok where they kill both friend and foe alike and when they run amok they seem to be more powerful than they are when they're in normal mode so it'll be interesting to see um, how well that chariot unit does. And he's got himself two um, chariot archer units here as well. If you have a closer look at them, you can see that each chariot has got two bowmen in. Um, and of course they do uh, form a Canterbury circle, uh, which makes them incredibly difficult to kill for ordinary um, archers. But do you remember we were having a look at Cleo's well-upgraded archers there? And you can see why he's bought them now, because he's hoping to inflict loads of casualties on those big 120 man Pontus Pike units there. So it'll be interesting to see how well those uh, uh, well upgraded archers do against the chariots, etc. Okay, at this very, very early stage of the battle here, you can see that um, the Pontus player is taking his um, chariot archers and his heavy uh, chariot there out to the left flank, also bringing his own well upgraded archers. I think those are fully upgraded Pontus archers there as well. Um, if you notice here, can you see uh, Cleo moving his um, cavalry out to the flank of his archers there to stop any um, chariot or cavalry attack on his archers. But let's say this is a very, <clears throat> very, very early stage of the battle here. Let's say those Pontus um, archers there, they're fully upgraded. Nine upgrades on those Pontus archers. So they're quite serious archers themselves. Three experience strike, gold shield, gold attack. Right, can you see here Cleo running a cavalry unit forward? Notice it's not in wedge formation, it's just normal formation for speed. Remember, um, when you go into wedge formation, that kind of slows your cavalry down. But keeping them in normal um, formation like that, and they still they can move quite fast there. Right, can you notice here that these chariot archers are in a Canterbury circle? And they shoot arrows like a machine gun then as they go around there, um, shooting at Cleo's archers there. And probably targeting his cavalry. I see that other... Um, Archer unit, uh, chariot archer unit. They're probably, um, as I say, targeting Cleo's cavalry. I can see a patch of dead cavalry there, where those um, chariot archers were targeted. So he's down to 34 men, so he's lost 20, probably about 21 um, cavalry men from that one unit there, um, courtesy of this uh, this chariot uh, archer unit in a Canterbury circle. And as I, say, as I say, foot archers shooting at these chariots in Canterbury circle, you just use a lot of arrows, you don't seem to do a lot. Let's just pause the game for a second. As you can see there, um, I think one of those have lost three um, chariot archers there, bearing in mind that how, how many uh, archers have been shooting. But look at the casualties they've caused um, Cleo's cavalry and own archer and his archers there as well. So, <clears throat> let's say he's got his two lots of well-upgraded um, foot archers here, Cleo, but they won't be doing a lot of damage to those um, <coughs> chariot archers because, as I say, once they get into um, those <coughs> Canterbury circles, um, they're extremely difficult to kill for foot archers there. There's a nice hit here by um, the Pontus uh, General there, trying to take out uh, an archer unit there with his cavalry. Cleo's uh, countered that, and he's going to try and take out that uh, Cappadocian cavalry unit there with his two um, SBQR cavalry units there. A lot of action going on on this left flank. As I say, it's so unusual to see Cleo bring Rome, um, especially three or four years ago. He was so good with, um, as I say, like all the rest of the Greek clan, with the pike and spear faction. So, uh, as I say, I think, uh, if I remember right, at the time I thought well, I was quite surprised to see him bring Rome. So... Uh, <clears throat> That, uh, those chariot archers though in their Canterbury circle are starting to get tired now and that means they start slowing down and then they can be picked off a bit easier by the uh, the foot archers. See that uh, scythe chariot unit going into Cleo's cavalry? Routed that carry. Remember those scythe chariots um, not only have got great attack and specification but the lower, they lower the morale of enemy troops as well making them more susceptible to routing. So you can see there the chariots now hacking down uh, Cleo's cavalry and here we are, we're going to go for a little run with the chariots here. See the chariots chasing Cleo's uh, cavalry there. Just took out a lot of his archers as well. 
Right, can you see the red banner flashing above that chariot unit? Okay, that chariot unit has now run amok. So both friend and foe alike must stay away from that unit because, as I say, when these chariot units run amok, they seem to be more powerful than in normal mode and seem to do more destruction. Let's just pause again for a second. Right, <clears throat> you can see that run amok chariot heading towards its Cappadocian cavalry. Um, Cleo's just uh, taken out one of those Cappadocian cavalry units there, but those uh, chariot archers are still shooting at him. <clears throat> but the Pontus general will be very aware that he doesn't want to run any of his cavalry units anywhere near that uh, run amok chariot there, because he will lose loads of his own cavalry to his own chariots there. You see, Cleo's got his cavalry at the back of his infantry there. I mean, well, over on the right flank, there's not a lot going on at all. The uh, the enemy Julii generals um, just standing there at the moment, and we're kind of just looking at each other. It's like a Mexican standoff over here on the right flank. But you can see the, um, the Julii archers are targeting Cleo's archers there as well. See, Cleo had those really well upgraded archers ready to concentrate on the Pontus Pikemen, but he hasn't been able to do that. The Pontus General has not allowed him to do that, and neither has the Julio General. Let's just pause again for a second. Right, that run amok um, chariot there, can you see how many of his own cavalry he's just killed? All those cavalrymen there have just been taken out by that run amok chariot. So a Pontus chariot has just taken out Pontus cavalry. See, that unit's just lost about 20 unit, uh, cavalrymen out of that unit there from that, uh, that run amok chariot. And as I say, that chariot will be running around the battlefield now, chopping anything it comes up against, friend and foe alike. As I say, Cleo, remember Cleo had those really well upgraded uh, archers there, as I say, he would have bought those spe specifically to target the Pontus Pointman. But uh, the Pontus General, uh, along with his Julio uh, ally there with his cavalry, has not allowed him to do that. So a lot of Cleo's archers have now been taken out. Um, without doing what he really wanted them to. Right, if you notice I've brought my SBQR cavalry over to this flank. Um, <clears throat> wouldn't surprise me if their archers start to target the Can you see I've already lost four cavalrymen from that one unit. Okay, so Cleo's had enough now, and if you notice, he's not messing around with archers, he's now doing a full-out attack on that Pontus General. Now remember, Cleo's only got about nine infantry units there, and I think the Pontus General's got 11 pikes. So, as you see, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, Cleo went into Testudo there with his forward units. The classic Roman defence against uh, Pike Attack. You notice I've moved my infantry forward towards the uh, the enemy Julii um, team, uh, army in front of me. Right, as you see, Cleo's formed a Testudo. There's a Cappadocian cavalry unit coming up. Bang! To hit one's, uh, one of Cleo's um, infantry units. And another Cappadocian cavalry. And bang! As that hits... There's enemy Julio cavalry coming in as well. A couple of units there. If you notice, Cleo's countering with his own cavalry. It's a bit like hammer and anvil attack. That's what they would like to do, having the pikes as the anvil and their cavalry as the hammer there. That's what they would like to do. But notice, Cleo's got a lot of his units over there at the moment covering that flank. Now notice here, Cleo's under a lot of pressure on this left flank. There's a lot of enemy cavalry and now infantry joining him. <clears throat> so what I've got to do on the other flank now is have a look at exactly what's happening here. Right, it's Cleo's cavalry now. He's up against Cappadocian cavalry. He's up against Julioi infantry and Julioi cavalry, all smashing into his SBQR cavalry there. But the Julioi general, through bringing units over to this side, has now weakened his own army facing me. Let's just pause the game for a second. Right, so as I say, there's a lot of Julio units moved over to that left flank there to try and assault uh, Cleo's uh, infantry over there. Can you notice a lot of Julio units moving, including his generals moving over there as well? Okay, so there's a lot of Julio units moved over there. So that means that facing me, there's only one, two, about six uh, infantry and three cavalry against my whole army. So what I'm looking to do is to try and smash this Julio army that's in front of me, what's left of it, and then get in behind the enemy Pontus. Uh, pikemen. Hit them in the flank, hit them in the rear. I just need to dispatch these Julio troops in front of me. <clears throat> and as I say, because he's weakened his army there by moving units over to the other flank, he is now susceptible to being hit by larger numbers from my infantry and cavalry. See my cavalry charger forward and...
bang as they smash into the Julioi infantry. The Julioi generals um, counterattack with his three units of cavalry. Now remember, his cavalry had eight upgrades on, two experienced striped gold shield gold attack. But I'm still pushing forward my uh, SBQ army there. I need to take out uh, these Julioi troops in front of me to get in behind the Pontus troops. Let's pause again for a second. So here, as I said, I've got to be really aggressive here and try and punch a hole through those Julio units, take them out, and then get in behind the Pontus uh, units there. You can see that some Julio units have got, got in behind Cleo here, both cavalry and infantry, and plus those Pontus pikemen are pushing forward into Cleo's infantry there. So on our left flank here, Cleo's doing extremely well, but um, things maybe not looking so good on our left flank. More Julio infantry coming round, and all the time they've got their archers, really well upgraded archers, they're shooting loads of arrows into us as well. <clears throat> I've noticed they're not using fire arrows, they're using ordinary arrows to cause the most casualties. Remember, fire arrows cause a few casualties, but lower morale, where normal arrows do cause a lot of casualties. Okay, so meanwhile, over on the right flank there, as I said, if I could smash through those Julio troops and get in behind Pontus, that is exactly what I want to do, and maybe draw some of their units over here away from Cleo. Right, so now here, Cleo's turned a lot of his units there to face that Julio threat coming in behind him. And I'm really pushing forward here with my cavalry and infantry into these Julio units there. I notice that some of the Pontus units and the Julio General now have returned to this flank, which is what I wanted. I wanted to try and draw some units away from Cleo's flank there <clears throat> to try and take the pressure off him. Right, can you see a lot of the Julio units with my cavalry and infantry have now been routed here on that right flank. Right, and this is a nice angle for the Julio cavalry to go in there and bang to the rear of that Testudo unit. That was a, I noticed that Julio cavalry were built round, put at a nice angle and charged in. That was a nice move by the Julio general. But now I've done what I wanted to. I've taken out those units that were in front of me. <clears throat> and I now need to get units round behind those Pontus pikemen if I can. It wouldn't surprise me if that Pontus general decided to box up. And what I mean by that is to make a defensive formation maybe with his pikes. Although they have got the upper hand at the moment. If you look at how many troops that Cleo's got left, he hasn't got a lot of troops left. And the Pontus General's still got a lot left and there's a lot of Julio units left as well. Now lies dead because of his I think Cleo's General's just been killed, yeah. So the morale of his troops will now drop over in that particular area. With his general been taken out and with them being surrounded and such if you notice i've got units in behind the pontus uh, pikemen there trying to get in behind i've got units attacking them in the flank uh, cleo's pulled some of his units back here ready to attack when he's ready but see you can see there's still a lot of julio units left and a lot of the pontus units left if you notice there i'm trying to charge down as many of those archers as i can with my cavalry because all through the game they've been kind of like taking loads and loads of casualties. We've been taking loads and loads of casualties from those archers. So I'm trying to take them out there. This Julio General um, has left his general in a very exposed position there. And if I can take that Julio General out, then of course that lower the morale of his troops. So that's why I'm trying to press home the attack there on that general. See that Julio cavalry charge in? I'm bang! Straight into the rear and flank of my attacking units there. Nice little hit there by the Julio General. But uh, we're still pushing forward here, still trying to take out um, those Pontus. But let's pause again for a second. Like I said, um, the Pontus general is looking like he's trying to box up a bit here. He's got a defensive pike wall there to protect against my cavalry and a couple of infantry units I was taking around. Um, <clears throat> he may box up or he may start to attack over here with his pikemen here and his uh, Julio ally. Remember those pikes, very long pikes, We've got to, uh, Roman troops are going to fight all the way down those pikes to kill the man on the other end. And remember those pikemen that he's, that he's got there have got eight upgrades on. Two experienced stripe, gold shield, gold attack. So we're really pushing home the attack. If you notice there on the other flank, you see my cavalry and infantry charging in. I'm bang! And my cavalry went in there. I was going for the side, the flank of that one pike unit there, trying to take that pike unit out. I threw infantry and cavalry in there in a, in a hope to try and um, smash that to, that unit there. But I um, managed to route one of the uh, pike units there. I've still got my cavalry there. I'm still looking to charge into the rear of engaged troops that are uh, fighting Cleo's and mine there. So 
see a few of the Pontus units starting to rout. But I can see some of our SBQR units routing as well here. So this battle's really up in the air at the moment. Most of Cleo's troops, I think he's only got about two units left now. Charge my carry. Bang! Great hit there by my carry. Took out the Julio General. Okay, so both the Pontus General, uh, no, the Pontus General slowed, but the Julio General has been taken out. So the morale of his troops are now going to drop. And I think from what I can see, as I said, I think Cleo's just got two units left now. If you notice, I'm charging my cavalry and I'm... Bang! As my battle damage cavalry smash into the back of that engaged Julio unit there. Took it out. As you can see, there's a lot of... Uh, there's some Julio cavalry still coming into the flank. And bang! As that Julio cavalry comes in there. I think um, Cleo's got one urban cohort unit left and one eagle unit and his eagle unit left. That's all he's got at the moment. As you can see I've still got some cavalry units left but they're very very battle damaged at the moment. See I'm trying to take out as many of those archers as I can because like I say they've been really causing us loads of casualties <coughs> all the way through the battle there. But here you can see um, the Pontus uh, general there pressing in with his pikes. There's a Julii cavalry bang straight into the rear of our engaged units there. That's another one of Cleo's units gone. I think Cleo's just got his eagle unit left now. You notice with my battle damage cavalry I tried to go into the rear of that Pontus unit but I think it turned too quick, got his pikes down before I could really hit into the rear. But as you can see now, can you see <coughs> the enemy pushing in on three sides of my army here. Got Pontus pikemen and Julii infantry pushing in on three sides. So it's not really a great position to be in here. But uh, I'm just hoping that um, my infantry will be able to fight its way out. Right, can you see I'm charging another my cavalry in again. I'm bang! straight into the back of that engaged Julio unit there and rout it. Now bearing in mind that my cavalry are really tired and extremely battle damaged, you can still use them well on the battlefield here if you pick the targets just right. I've still got my eagle unit there and Cleo's still got his eagle unit. Right, can you see I'm taking my general unit around the rear of the Pontus uh, pikeman there, probably looking to attack that Pontus general. Because as we know, uh, Pontus morale is very poor. And if we can take out the general, that's going to make life even easier. Right, you notice I charge in my cavalry and bang! Press forward, so that's so the, the uh, Pontus general up. taken out there. Victory is ours, but only by the and as you can see here, um, we've just managed... Look at the casualties. Got 12 men left there, 7 men left in there, 4 men left in that unit. So you can see how intense the fighting is. Uh, 22, and that seems a lot, 22. 22 there, 33, 10. Uh, four. So this goes to show how many casualties we actually suffered. My general unit just got 24 men. Look at my cavalry. I've got what? I've got three units left. One man in each unit. So that's three cavalry, cavalry units and one man left in each unit. So that just goes to show how intense and tough the fighting was in this battle. But um, it looks like um, Cleo and myself have managed to um, to go on and win this. I'm not sure, I can't see, I think, yeah, Cleo's got one unit left, I think. So it's a close victory there for us. Uh, really well played to everybody in the game. Um, I thought uh, the other team were quite aggressive and quite attacking on that left flank, so really well done to them. Uh, well done to Hero and COH Lucius C. Sulla there. Well done, guys. Nice kills and nice aggressive attack, as I say, on that left flank. Um, <clears throat> and say it was a close victory. Um, Cleo probably didn't get the kills that he was hoping for, but he did extremely well on that left flank to hold it as long as he did. Um, let's just have a look at the um, bar statistics. As you can see, that's Cleo's army at the top because he got those five well-upgraded archers there. But if you notice the kills that he got for all the money he spent on those archers, maybe uh, was it worth it? Not sure, really. And my army is the bottom army here. Um, <clears throat> if you look, cavalry kills not too bad the cavalry didn't do too badly there I see one cavalry unit killed 177 and one killed 117 
Um, but if you look at infantry kills as well, they did quite good against um, the enemy uh, team there. So uh, yeah, kills there are not too bad for my uh, for my infantry. But I say, uh, really, once again, really well played over the game. As I say, this was a quick 2v2 I thought I'd put on as a midweek bonus battle. Hope you enjoyed it. It's Spartan Commander saying bye for now and see you soon.